So I'm going to do my best to stay awake, and hopefully <laughs> you will too. But uh, <clears throat> how good. Uh, it's like, uh, uh, what, like the old-time preacher, that old-time preacher. He said, I'm like the lightning bug that backed into the electric fan. I'm delighted to be here. Amen. <laughs> uh, my wife says, that, that gets old quick. And I said, it never gets old. But anyway, uh, I'm delighted. Amen. And uh, <clears throat> I'm saying thank the Lord for our church and, and uh, for you folks. You are the church. And I was thinking about <clears throat> all the folks that have come through here over the years and uh, thankful for them. And I was thinking the hundreds of people have gotten saved through the ministry. Uh, that God has seen saved. I'm thankful for them. I said, I believe one other time when I was preaching, I was down in Alabama preaching down there, and it, they were uh, celebrating the pastor's anniversary of being at that church. As the church had been there for over 100 years, and the pastor had been there, I think, for 20 or so, and uh, they had a he had kept record of every soul that had gotten saved. And any major uh, baptisms, all the, all the decisions. And they, one of the fellows got up and started to read all the things, all the people that had gotten saved under his ministry and all the people were baptized under his ministry and all that. And I thought to myself, you know what, maybe I should have done that. Maybe I should have kept track, you know. And then I got to, to realize it, uh, it, it wasn't, uh, I mean, God used him in a great way. But you know what, um, I don't know how many got saved. I know a lot of folks have gotten saved, and a lot of folks have come through here, and uh, and uh, thankful for that. But you know what? God knows, and that that all that's all that really matters. And uh, thankful for the the good times. And by the way, they've all been good. Somebody say, well, we had some good days. I've got news for you. Every day's good. Today's good. <laughs> I don't know about you, but for me, it doesn't get much better than this. Would I like to see some more folks here? Yeah. Would I like to see some visitors? Had a fellow yesterday that sounded uh, pretty promising that he was going to come. But I thought, you know, uh, it was a good day. And... Uh, Thankful for our church and thankful for what the Lord is doing. And I was thinking about a verse, and if you have your Bibles there, Luke chapter, um, Luke chapter 14, Luke chapter 14, and verse number 28. I'm going to read a couple of verses there and then turn over to Mark 16. And I'm not going to be long. Uh, I'm, I just have a few things I'd like to share with you. A little recap. Some of you have been here. <clears throat> Some of you have been here for all the time. Some of you have been here close to all the time. Some of you maybe towards the end of the time. But, you know, um, I just um, uh, talked to a pastor that their church had celebrated the 150th year, 150th anniversary. That church had been there. And uh, and I was thinking, you know, what, a, what an accomplishment in the day and time which we live. So many churches have closed down. Good churches that have seen many, many folks saved are no longer in existence. And uh, I'm thankful that God has just had his hand upon us and uh, helped us along the way. And I was thinking about this concept and this idea, and hopefully I, I have some notes and hopefully I can put together uh, what's in my heart that would be an encouragement to you. In Luke chapter 14 and verse number 28, it says, For which of you, att uh, attending to build a tower, Sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether ye have sufficient sufficiency to finish it, lest happily after ye hath laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begins to begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. And let's pray, Heavenly Father. I need your help this morning or this evening. <clears throat> Lord, uh, today I surely do. Lord, help me, I pray. Lord, lay some things on my heart, maybe a little recap, uh, a snapshot of some of the things that have taken place over the years. Surely not all that you have done. Lord, surely not all that you have done, man, uh, been so faithful to us and, Lord, providing the needs. Lord, I pray you continue to bless us. Lord, I pray you'd add to us, help us to 
uh, press forward to you. Lord, may we be faithful. <clears throat> Lord, uh, may we be faithful when you come for us. Our Lord, when you call us home together or individually, Lord, I pray you just help us to be faithful. Lord, bless our church. Bless our pastor. Lord, help us, I pray, to rally around the cause. Lord, to continue to do the work that you started. Lord, in each and every one of us in this church, I pray. And Lord, we ask you to bless. Bless this <clears throat> time. Use it, I pray. Uh, Lord, uh, help us to, Lord, help me to lift you up. I surely want to, and Lord bless, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> of course, we see the, the uh, parable here that Jesus spoke and said, to, it says, for uh, which of you intended to build a tower, sitteth not down, and first uh, counteth the cost which uh, you have sufficiency to finish it. You know, oftentimes <clears throat> God lays on our hearts to do something, and we begin to, humanly speaking, think about how it could be. I've seen this often. I've seen it in my life. I've seen it more in my life in the later years than I have in the beginning. And I'm thankful for that. I thought, you know what? If I had the mindset today that I, if I had the mindset 32 years ago that I have today, I don't know what I would have done or what I would have accomplished as far as starting the church or continuing on. Because... When you're younger, you have the zeal and the enthusiasm, and you think you have the strength and the wherewithal, you know, to say, you know, I can do this. And uh, I guess when you're younger, you say, I can do this. And now when you're older, you say, oh, I think I can do this, you know, or Lord, help me to do this, you know. But anyway, I was thinking about that. And of course, he says, and in a wise, 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 uh, um, thought here a wise truth you know when you need we need to count the cost you need to figure out what it would take to do it you know what because what a te what a sorry testimony it would be that you would start something get it halfway through and on it not able to see it through and i was thinking about uh that and i was thinking about you know we counted the cost and knowing that god would have you to do it but you you saw the greatness or the bigness of the cost and you didn't see the bigness of god you know, a lot of times that's exactly what happens here on earth. We humanly or physically, uh, physically speaking, we see the great, the greatness or, or the bigness of the cost, but we don't, we don't compare it to the bigness of God. You know, it's inter interesting. We see uh, uh, Caleb and Joshua. You know what? They saw the, they saw the, uh, just as the others, they saw the giants and they saw uh, the inhabitants. And there's like, we can do this. But guess what? Joshua and Caleb, they realized that God was bigger than, the, than they were, than they were or bigger than their enemy. And oftentimes, if we're not careful, we won't see it, put it in perspective how big God is compared to maybe the, the cost. And I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about a passage over in, in kind of, kind of an obscure thought, but over here in uh, chapter 16 in the book of Mark, a very familiar story about the resurrection of Christ. But what it's not really what I want to bring out. I want to bring out a thought that we see in the ladies uh, that are involved here, and it says, "And when the Sabbath was past, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James." And Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at, at the rising of the sun. Verse 3 is what I was, was kind of jumped out at me. It says, And they said among themselves, Who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? They're talking about themselves. They're, they're going to... They're going, they have the spices, they prepared the spices, they're going to the tomb, they want to anoint uh, Jesus' body, but they're saying, they're thinking, we're doing what we ought to be doing, we're doing what God led us to do, we're doing what God would have us to do, but how's it going to work out? <laughs> how, does, how is it going to work out? He's, they said, uh, who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? You know what? A lot of folks, it, before they left home or before they started putting together the spices, they would have said, what's the sense? If we got there, how would we get in? The stones again rolled up against there. But you know what? They decided that they were, there was something that they wanted to do or God led them to do. And they, they thought it would bring honor to God. So they decided to, to do that. 
And by the way, I'm sure when they got there and they found that the stone, stone was rolled away and all that had t- transpired and Jesus wasn't there, I'm glad they were there. I, I'm sure they were glad they were there this, that morning. You know, they could have been home sleeping, but instead they were going to do something. And I thought, you know, just the fact that we want to do something for God, many times if we're not, if we're not careful, and I'm talking to myself, you know, I'm talking to myself as much as anyone in this room. If we're not careful, we won't do it because we count it, we have counted the cost, which we, we need to count the cost. We need to see what it's going to take. But then also we need to see the bigness of God. We need to see what God can do. And I was thinking about that in, in the history of our church. I was thinking about that, that kind of, that attitude that we see in the very beginning, what, what had taken place. You say, I'm not sure how this is going to work out, but I believe without a shadow of a doubt, this is what God would have us to do. And by the way, that is exactly what we were facing back in the very beginning. I'm sure many of you know this, or you've heard me talk about it. In, uh, in the spring of uh, 1987, uh, I was just about ready to graduate from uh, from Bible college, and I wasn't sure exactly what I, <clears throat> what I was going to do. And uh, I was praying for God's leading and God's direction. And when you get to that point, it took me five years to get through the program, and I got my uh, a bachelor of science de- uh, degree in theology, and and I got to that point. And at this point in time, I was uh, um, what would I be thirty. 37 years old. Yeah, so I did like math, you know. <laughs> I was 37, 30, would that be right? 37 years old, wouldn't that be right? 1987, 50, 60, 70, yeah, 80, 37. Yeah, I can still add on my fingers, amen. <laughs> Don't need my calculator, I got my digits, amen. <laughs> but anyway, I was 37 years old, and everybody was asking me, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do now? You're through, finally, and by the way, to get through college was, it was, it was God. I know that, and I could tell you that, how God worked and provided and helped me and, uh, and helped me to grasp things. Anyway, I was praying for leading, guiding, direction. I had a, a couple tentative, not anything solid or an offers, but I had some uh, some uh, uh, tentative or mentioned jobs that I could go to I, in Florida. One of them was in Ruskin, Florida. One of them is in at Seagate Baptist Church. I was a pastor down there. My pastor wanted me to come back and work with him. And, and another friend uh, that I had was in Ruskin, Florida and uh, said, why don't you come down and see if we can, you know, have a job there. But I wasn't sure what God would have me to do, and I was praying about it. And uh, it was, uh, uh, went and sought some counsel, uh, what what I should do. And, of course, at that time, uh, you know, the boys were t- almost, teenag- were t- almost teenagers or were teenagers, and, and uh, Ron is graduating from high school, and, and uh, so, you know, uh, and I was asked, I was getting some counsel what I should do, and I was asked, what, the, the pastor asked me, what do you see yourself doing five years from now? And I said, pastoring a church. And he said, with your experience going into Bible college and your age and your marital status and your kids, he said, you need to, you need to either find a church or take a church. And he said these words to me. He said, is there anything that's been on your mind or heart, any area that's been on your mind and heart? And first I kind of dismissed it because I, I didn't have anything because I wasn't thinking that direction. But God began to work in my heart, and, and I was uh, doing a job, working on a job out here in Beverly Shores. And uh, there was a church, an old church, the Old North Church over on uh, Beverly Drive that was uh, moved there in, uh, uh, I think, shortly after the 1933 World's Fair. It was a replica of the Old North Church, you know, the one in Boston, the what was it, uh, uh, Midnight Ride of Paul Revere? Uh, was it uh, one if by one if by land, two if by sea? You know the light and the and the in the bell uh, bell chase. Anyway, it was a replica of that church. And at the time, I drove by that, and and there was no the grass had grown up, and it wasn't in use. And uh, in fact, the last people that used that church was the Universal Unitarians. <laughs> don't ask me what a Universal Unitarian is. I don't know. <laughs> or what they believe. I didn't know. But I just knew that they had uh, pretty much abandoned it and they were going to let it go back to the their national 
council or back in in Chicago, and I'd sit there on the steps of that church numerous times and pray, dear God. And I wasn't praying for the building, or I wasn't praying. I was just sitting there on the steps praying, asking God to lead me and guide me and direct me. And when I was asked that question from getting counsel, is there any place that was in mind? And I, it, my mind later on, the few days after that, brought me back to this area. And so we began to research it a little bit, and I visited some churches around uh, around our town. Uh, I visited Bible Baptist Church back then, and, and they were going through some difficulties, and there were some shadows hanging over them, and they were struggling with it, and and really never never really came back from it. And uh, I visited some other churches, and God began to, I know Fairhaven was down the road, and, and I also knew that big churches weren't for everyone, and they were different in some areas, and and uh, I, 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 God just began to work on my heart. So we began to look for, look for a place. And uh, I contacted uh, the, uh, and by the way, to, to back up a little bit, during that period of time, the fellow that I was working for uh, asked me, he said, what, what, what are you going to do? Uh, he says, when you graduate, what are you going to do? Are you going to stay in the area? I said, no, I'm going to do whatever God would have me to do. And if you tell a lost person that, they just kind of look at you funny, like, what do you mean? What's God have to <clears throat> do with it? But I was waiting on God, and he said, well, he made this statement. He said, well, if, if you do something around here, I'd be willing to help you. And I pretty much dismissed it because, you know what, I usually found out when someone wanted something, it was some, they, something they wanted in return. So I pretty much dismissed it, but I began, began checking on some buildings, and I found a building on the corner of... Uh, it's on the corner for rent. For, no, it wasn't even a, a sign for rent, but there was a building on the corner of uh, D- Dunes Highway and uh, Broadway, right at the corner that across from the gas station. There's a one-story building that's kind of spread out, and it's amazing. I drove by there this past week, and that building is still for rent. As far as I know, there's never been anybody renting that building on a consistent basis in 32 years. Now, that's amazing to me. And I think they have some, now they've divided it, and you can buy, rent part of it. But anyway, I, I contacted the guy, and I contacted him, and I said, hey, I'm interested in renting the building. Would you rent part of it or all of it? And uh, he said, what, were you, what are you going to use it for? I said, well, I'm going to start a church. And he said, well, let me, let me, he says, the building belongs to my father. Let me check with him. They, he lives in Chicago. Let me check with him. I'll get back with you. And he calls me back, I think it was the very next day, and he said, what kind of church is it? And I said, Baptist church. And he said, I'll get back with you. And I think either that day or the very next day, he said, my dad's not interested in renting it. <laughs> uh, he wasn't interested in renting it to a Baptist church. You know, I was a little bit, uh, I was a little bit upset about it, Brother Brad. I said, man, what's, you know, what's wrong, God? I, I believe this is what you'd have me to do. And, and uh, uh, anyway, to make a long story short, <clears throat> we uh, I tried to rent that. I tried, we tried to buy the Old North Church when I contacted the person. Uh, that was in charge of it. They said, uh, uh, "Well, we're, uh, the fellow that that was that was at one time in charge of it or on, on the board." He said, "Well, I'm not. I don't know. But we're not interested in renting it. It went back to the to the council. You'd have to contact them." Well, anyway, I said I was interested in buying it, and all of a sudden they they kind of come back together and wanted to wanted to sell it, but the price they wanted for it was just got ridiculous. Ended up selling it later on, and someone bought it and made it a house and an art studio. And there's not a time that I don't go by that place that I don't thank God that that didn't work out. <laughs> I mean, you almost need a road map to find it. I mean, you almost, <laughs> there is absolutely, positively no room. I mean, you could, if you could put two cars or three cars alongside that building, that was about it. It's surrounded by government land that they wouldn't let you build anything on. And I go by there, and I praise God every time I see it. I thought, well, you know what? And uh, so then the fellow I was working for said, why don't you build something? And I said, how could I build something? You know, it, it takes money. I don't have money. And, and I said, uh, <clears throat> he said, well, how about this? How about if I loan you, loan you the money? And I said, I don't have the money, and I couldn't go to the bank and borrow it. Uh, you know, not the kind of money. He said, what would it take to put up a basic building? And I said, about $50,000. And he said, how about if I loan you $50,000, you pay it back in 10 and pay it back within 10 years. And I said, that would, oh, that'd be great. So we found this property, five acres, and it was for sale. And it had been for sale for, for some time. And we ended up buying the property for $15,000. 
which he donated in the very beginning, $15,000 to buy the property. So we have the property bought and we have, uh, I've, I, I've agreed for, to borrow $50,000. So <clears throat> we started, start, got the permits from state, got the building, started building the building and uh, uh, making some progress. This, we broke ground on the building in October of 1988. Uh, we broke ground. We dug the footer, dug, got the footers dug, started pouring the footers foundation, did the uh, work in the slab and poured the concrete. And during that winter, we built the built the building. We had help from some other churches, some other men that helped us, and we worked on it. And then uh, our, we had our first service on Mother's Day. That was May 14th of uh, 1989. We had our first service. We had a great turnout. I think we had over 60 people. I mean, it looked good. It, really, it looked great. But the problem was most of them were my friends <laughs> and my relatives. <laughs> and, uh, but God began to bless, and we got some folks in. I believe it was the very next week. I think it was the very next week Dawn came and uh, some other folks. And, uh, and I thought, you know, uh, it, it was exciting. Things began to happen. And f folks started asking me, well, you know, is the building free and clear? I was like, no, uh, the building's not free and clear. I have a mortgage on it. And then the next question is, well, how much is the payment? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I don't really know because I've never signed a contract. Can you imagine this in the daytime? Which, uh, the guy gave us $15,000, a donation. And by the way, I took that money. Uh, before we accepted the money, we, we, were, uh, we were designated Dunes Baptist Church. That money went right into Dunes Baptist Church account. Not in my account, went right in Dunes Baptist Church account. And then we <clears throat> began doing the work. And as I would, uh, he gave me some of the money. Uh, uh, we broke it up, I think, four different draws over the $50,000. Anyway, I need to make, make a quicker story. He gave us the money. We put, go so far, give me another check, go take it to the next part. We're almost done. We're, we, have a, we have the building that we can meet in. By the way, along that, along that time, the uh, state, <laughs> The state came into the picture and said, wait a minute, I know we, uh, we uh, gave you a permit, but you need to put a deceleration acceleration lane in here, which is not very, it's, it, 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 what, what would be needed would be a third turn lane, but that wasn't going to happen. But they wanted us to put that in, that, and that lane cost us four, over $14,000 to put that, have that put in. And so I went back to the fellow that was borrowing the forty thousand, the fifty thousand dollars, and I told him the situation. And of course, then he loaned us an, another 50, almost fifteen thousand dollars. So we're, at this point, we're looking at sixty-five thousand dollars. We have the building up; we're using it. It's in Dunes Baptist Church's name. No lien on it. No, and, and I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the attorney to draw up the papers. And you know how, if you've ever dealt with lawyers, I tell you what. They're, <laughs> They're a difficult crowd to deal with, you know. I mean, it's like uh, they do what they want to do, not what you want them to do, you know. So you're calling them, you're calling them, you're calling them, and they'll say, "Oh yeah, we'll take care of it. We'll have it tomorrow," you know. Anyway, I'm calling them like every day. Where's the paperwork? You know, where's the paperwork? We we had a, a charter member Sunday. That was in June. We had a charter member Sunday. In June, we had charter member Sunday, and we still didn't have a mortgage on the building. <laughs> And we had, and it was great. We had, I don't know how many folks signed charter member. And that was in the end of June. And, and the people kept, kept asking me. So I kept calling the attorney and calling the attorney. And many of you know the story. I finally, finally the uh, attorney, um, uh, I kept calling him. I didn't hear from him, didn't hear from him. And I got a call one uh, Monday. I think it was Mon Sunday night or Monday that the fellow that had loaned us the money, Mr. Force, he wanted me to meet him. And he said, we'll meet down, he lived in, had a house in Beverly Shores. We met down here at the, the corner down here at, uh, uh, there used to, on down the road, there used to be a little restaurant, wooden nickel restaurant. He said, I'll meet you there Monday morning. And that night I couldn't, I think it was Monday morning or Tuesday morning, I couldn't sleep. I was wondering what in the world is he going to do? How can he change his mind? He already gave me the money, you know, and I was, I was anxious about it. You know, I was anxious about it. And I walked in and sat down and he said, well, I said, you know, what I was talking about, uh, I, he said, I talked to the attorney and on the, on the paperwork, and uh, I said, yeah, I've been calling him every day. He said, you know what? He said, I told him don't bother with it, not, not to worry. He took, he took that money that we, were owed, that we owed him. He took it and divided it up over three years and took it as a tax deduction, and I was amazed. 
I was overwhelmed. I counted the cost. <laughs> I knew what it was going to cost, or I thought I did. And we got to that point, and God worked it out in his heart to forgive that money. Someone said later, said, well, you know what? That was a tax deduction for him. Yeah, but it was still money that he made, <laughs> that he gave me. That he. And by the way, you, you don't, don't write it completely off. He took it over the next three years, and I'm sure... I'm sure he got that tax credit for that, but I thought, you know, that was God working in his heart. In fact, I told another Christian that he, that he had done business with for years what he had done, and this is what the Christian man said to me. He said, if, you, if it wasn't you telling me this, I wouldn't believe it. He said, he is one of the most shrewdest businessmen I've ever met in my life. I can't imagine him doing anything like that. But you know what? It wasn't him. It was God. God did it. It was God that did that. And I thought, you know what? It was God working and providing and meeting the needs. And I thought, what a, what a wonderful, what a blessing. It, 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 and sitting there at the table was one of uh, his uh, business associates that I knew, uh, just knew briefly. And I had prayed for his son that was, uh, uh, oh, uh, about a year before that, I prayed for his son that was on drugs. He asked me to pray for him. And anyway, he, uh, he, said, he said, hey, he said, what are you going to do for a sign? I said, well, if some of you remember, the original sign that we had, it said future home of Dunes Baptist Church. Well, there wasn't no sign out there, so I took, took a circular saw and I cut the future home. I just, I mean, I just took the saw, cut it off, and now it says Dunes Baptist Church. <laughs> I didn't even change the sign. There's signs out there on 4 by 4s I just took the saw, cut it off. Now we have Dunes Baptist Church. We didn't have any money for a sign. I said, hey, you know what? It's no future home. It's here, you know, so cut the future home off. And we had that sign, and I was thinking, boy, it'd be nice to have a nicer sign. And by the way, I wanted to put a nicer sign out by the road. I thought it'd be nice to put some letters on the building. And the fellow that was sitting there said to me, he said, he said, what are you going to do about a sign? I said, well, we just haven't had money for it. He said, you know what? It'd be nice if you put some letters on the building and light it up. I said, that'd be a great idea. He says, you know what? He said, you order it and get it put on and send me the bill. I think it was back then it was $700. And that day, not only did we get our debt forgiven, we got money, for, got, got a blank check to put a sign on the building. And I thought that was God. That was God doing that. And I thought, you know what? I counted the cost. I stepped out by faith. And God began to work. And God began to bless. He met, he met the needs through a lost man. The good news is this. Later on, uh, Mr. Forsey got saved before he died. And by the way, I had an opportunity to share some of this story at his funeral. But I thought, you know what? God began to use that. And we seen God's hand. I said, counted the cost. But I didn't let the cost hinder us from going forward. You know, sometimes we would say, well, we don't have the money for that. Yeah. Well, I was, I was willing to obligate, it. in the very beginning, I was willing to obligate myself. And, uh, and, and once we had a, a church body, I was <laughs> basically already had obligated the church to it. And by the way, I told the church that from the very beginning, that we would be obligated for that building debt. And by the way, people were excited about it. You know, it was a wonderful thing. We see, we see how God worked. And I thought, how exciting it is. And I give God the credit and honor and glory. It was just God working and God meeting the needs. I was thinking about we, um, we, we raised the money for the second part of the, uh, to build this, the, the addition, the fellowship hall in the classrooms back there. We started out raising money. We said, hey, if, if uh, we're going to raise the money to build it. And if we can't raise it, I'm not against borrowing it. But guess what? I believe God gave us this part of the building. I believe God will give us that part. And we raised over $30,000, and we worked together and put that on. Doubled the size of our building from 2,000 to 4,000 square feet. And it was God. God's people working together. Believing God can and will. And God blessed us. No doubt God has been with us every step of the way. And how wonderful it's been. How wonderful it's been to be a part of it. How wonderful it's been to see God work. I thought, you know what? <laughs> if I would have said, or we'd have decided, hey, there's no way, <laughs> no way we can come up with that kind of money. <laughs> and by the way, it was God working. God working and meeting the needs. 
And I thought, you know what, how wonderful it is. I thought, you know what, it, some valuable, valuable lessons I learned through that. You know what, it was, <laughs> if God's leading you to do it, God will make a way. You know what, it may have been God <laughs> speaking to that man's heart uh, to forgive the debt. It may be <laughs> God's people coming together to make the monthly payment for 10 years. But all I know is this, God was in it and God, <laughs> God blessed and how wonderful it is to know that we got a God in heaven that helps us every step of the way. You know, often, oftentimes, I'll say, you know what? I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. I really don't. I look around in America today, and I'm, I'm thinking, man, what in the world's, what in the world's around the corner? I don't know. But you know what? The good news is this: I don't have to know. All I need to know is the God that knows. Amen. And he's there for us. And how thankful I am. How thankful I am there's a God in heaven. And he's been with us every step of the way. And I, I thought, boy, Lord, help us, help us to keep on going. And Lord, be with us every step of the way to bring honor and glory to you day and time which we live. And we'll just, I just, boy, you know what? I just want to thank him and praise him today for what he has done. Where would we be today without the Lord and lost on our way to hell? But you know what? I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven because he made a way. And you know what? He's provided our needs as far as a building and a church, a church, a place to meet. And he provided people like you to be faithful, to give and keep the doors open. How thankful I am. There's a God in heaven and he's real in the day and time which we live.